Marcin Budkowski's departure from his job as executive director of Alpine leaves the team searching for its fourth team boss in just six years. Budkowski has left Alpine with immediate effect, with Alpine CEO Laurent Rossi taking day-to-day -day control on an interim basis pending the appointment of a replacement. He was, to all intents and purposes, the Alpine team principal, despite the fact that the plan to give him that title in 2021 was changed at the 11th hour, and leaves the team needing fresh leadership ahead of a season when it hopes to take a big step forward. This is the latest eruption in the leadership of Alpine since it bought the ailing Lotus team ahead of 2016, and part of the process of management changes that Rossi decided were required last year. So why has Budkowski left? What does it mean for Alpine, and how might it fit in with other moves in the unusually active F1 team boss market? When Renault revived its works team in 2016, Frederick Vasseur, now leading Alfa Romeo, was in charge. He left after that first season, with former Caterham team boss Cyril Abitable, who was already at Renault F1 as managing director, taking over as team principal. Budkowski joined Renault in 2018. He started his F1 career as an aerodynamicist for the Prost team back in 2001, moving to Ferrari the following season and rising to become aerodynamics team leader. He then joined McLaren in late 2007 as senior aerodynamicist, where he later became head of aerodynamics. He then made the unusual move to the FIA in late 2014, where he held several roles including head of the Formula One technical department. When he agreed to join Renault in 2018, his move caused huge controversy because of concerns about someone who possessed sensitive technical information from all F1 teams working for one of them. As a result, in his early months at Renault, he was not allowed to work directly on the F1 project on the team side, spending three months based at its engine headquarters in Viry Châtillon. In April 2018, Budkowski switched to Enstone and was able to start his new role in earnest. As executive director, he had oversight of all technical and race departments. At this point, the team was still restructuring following significant investment from Renault, so he implemented new management and communication structures aimed at improving performance. But it was only in his final season at the team in 2021 that he became de facto team principal after Abitable vacated the role. Budkowski's departure potentially brings to an end the somewhat chaotic interim leadership structure that existed last year. When Abitable, who had been given a new role at the top of Alpine, made the surprise decision to leave, Rossi took over as Alpine CEO. Davide Brivio was parachuted in from MotoGP, but in the role of racing director, meaning he was in charge of the team trackside. Budkowski continued to head up the Enstone side of the operations, as well as overseeing collaboration with the Renault Power Unit project, but plans to make him the official team principal were dropped and he continued to be executive director, but that only lasted one year. We'll explain why in a moment, but first many thanks for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, and if you don't want to miss anything from the race, then you definitely want to subscribe to our channel. It's hugely appreciated and does make a big difference. We can only do what we do because of you watching and liking our videos, and we can promise that we have plenty in the pipeline for 2022. Neither Alpine nor Budkowski have offered anything beyond the usual anodyne comments about the reason for the parting of the ways. However, something like this has been on the cards for some time. The leadership structure of 2021 was always a compromise solution forced by Abitable's exit, but it was only later in the season that Rossi acknowledged the potential weaknesses when he started to comment on the possibility of structural changes. By the end of last year, it seemed clear that the three-man leadership team would not last the winter. Rossi wanted to get to the end of the season before committing to any changes, but he also had what he called a roadmap to chart the team's progress against and to target areas to improve. Budkowski was ultimately responsible for Endstone, which suffered problems in the wind tunnel last year and has failed to make a convincing case that it has conquered its pre-existing aerodynamic development demons. Whether he walked away because he felt it was impossible to turn around, or he paid the price for the lack of progress, and the truth is probably somewhere in between, Budkowski appears to have lost the battle at Alpine. Alpine now has the chance to fix its curious management structure. Rossi's role as CEO of Alpine Cars means that he can only have a temporary day-to-day -day involvement with the team, although he did attend a significant number of races in 2021. But it would be logical to appoint a new team boss, whatever job title is chosen. It's clear that Rossi was not confident Budkowski was the right man for the job, and that he feels the team's leadership was lacking something. 
formulating a more robust leadership structure is a key test of his capacity to lead Renault Group's Works F1 program successfully. If Rossi doesn't get this right, Alpine's project risks being undermined by a continuing management merry-go-round. The obvious candidate to take up the role as Alpine team boss is Otmar Safnauer, who left the role of Aston Martin team principal at the end of 2021, when his contract ended. This was announced eight days before Bukowski's departure was. Safnauer was linked with a move to Alpine last year, which he denied, not especially convincingly, during a press conference at last November's Brazilian Grand Prix. Safnauer has a huge amount of F1 experience, including 12 years at the top of Aston Martin, during which it emerged as a serial overachiever in its Force India and Racing Point guises. The Silverstone-based team is also well known for its sharp racing culture and collaboration, qualities that Alpine will be looking to improve. There had been rumours that Budkowski could go the other way and take Safnauer's place at Aston Martin. While that would have been an elegant solution, Aston Martin has now announced that former BMW Motorsport boss Mike Crack has taken up the team principal vacancy. Crack has F1 experience stretching back to 2001 with Sauber, where he was later race engineer for Felipe Massa. He also has experience as head of track engineering for the Porsche LMP1 project, where he worked under Andreas Seidel, who is now team principal at McLaren. He also worked with Aston Martin driver Sebastian Vettel during his BMW Sauber days. As for Budkowski, his F1 future is therefore uncertain. Given he has two decades of experience in F1 with multiple teams, on top of his stint with the FIA, his CV will likely be of interest to many. But given his ambition to be a full-blown F1 team principal, there do not appear to be any obvious destinations for him right now. With Aston Martin having filled its vacancy, all eyes are now on Alpine for what it chooses to do next. It too needs to move fast, with the start of the season rapidly approaching. But given Budkowski's departure was not exactly unexpected, it surely won't be long before the gap at the top of Alpine F1 is filled. As for Alpine, what is key now is that it makes the right decisions about its leadership structure as it heads into what will be a crucial season for an underachieving team that has been mired in the midfield for too long. With a major step forward planned for its power unit after a conservative approach in 2021 and hopes of producing a strong car for the new regulations, what we see on track in 2022 will be in part the result of Budkowski's leadership of the team. But however it goes, his successor needs to be the right one.